Hello everyone. We just got back from Japan. If you've checked out our Instagram, you might have seen some very interesting pictures that we took while we were there. It was very, very, very fun. We went to an awful lot of hobby shops. We did indeed. An awful lot of nerdy shops. It's very not all nerdy. we did, but it was quite a lot. It's quite a lot of it, and it's quite good to do, so. Yes, and Highly we bought recommend. some pretty amazing stuff that we're going to do a run through of shortly. Um, we did hit up Warhammer. The Warhammer Cafe in Tokyo, the Warhammer Shop in Osaka. Fantastic. Both are very good. Uh, we're going to talk about some of our favorite shops, some of the best spots to do. If you ever want to check out the description below, we're going to give a bit of a rundown of the very best places that we went um, and give some recommendations if you find yourself in Japan, which you absolutely should if you can. And we're just going to run down all this cool hobby stuff that we got. Mm. There may well be a giveaway, so stick around till the end and we'll tell you what's up. <laughs> We get going. Oh, There's a lot to unpack here. I cannot wait. I, well, mate, it's, some of it was brilliant. Mm. Let's start off with God Hands. God Hands. Not these. Not those. <laughs> God Hands. These yeah. are meant to be the number one clippers that you can, that is a mm. known to man that money can buy. Um, let's start off with these ones. We got two different types of God Hands, mm -hmm. a slightly higher and a slightly lower end one. Strangely hard to find. I actually mm. managed to pick these ones up in uh, an art shop in Shibuya. Uh, as opposed to Yodabashi Camera, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, which is the mecca for everything nerdy. We've got some of these, which are the GH SPN 120s. We've also got some of these to do a little bit of a comparison with. These are the God Hands GH SG 01s. Both of these uh, are our second cut nippers, which we, mm. in our very terrible Japanese, managed to pick up uh, for the guy who's helping us <laughs> yeah. out. But really, you're meant to do your first cut with something else, and mm. then they're super, super flat, so you can go straight against the sprue. We're going to be testing these out, and yep. we will report back because we mm. did also pick up some God Hands needle nose pliers. Mm -hmm. Need some of these. Uh, we're doing a bit more kit bashing at the moment, and some mm. of these hobby challenges and stuff yeah. like this is invaluable. Uh, just another pair of these lads here. These ones come with their handy little pooch, uh, mm. but you can also buy the pouch separately. Exactly. Lovely. Exactly. To make Would it you like to nice. move these to the right, Daniel, and we'll move on from God Hands. Thank you very much. Beautiful helper. Okay. Daniel, should we talk about Volk's Hobby Center? Oh, oh, Aki Habera. Yes. The nerd capital of the world. The nerd capital of the world is bloody cool. It's very, Akihabara. very cool. And there's some amazing hobby shops there. Mm. We're going to get to a couple of them. Let's start off with Volk's, though. Yes. And let's start off with this. This, Daniel, is the first non-Kalinsky sable brush that I've ever, well, no, not that I've ever owned, but that I've bought in a very long time. Also, Japanese paintbrush. Also, kind of nice that it's got, yeah. you know, wooden handle. Wooden it's handle. Kind of cute. Very, very nice for detailing. But, well, we're going to see. So, I've, I've been a huge fan of Kalinsky sable brushes for mm -hmm. a very long time. I genuinely think it's worth the upfront investment. Uh, investment. They're bloody great. They hold a really fine tip, and I genuinely believe they make you a better painter. This is not Kalinsky sable, mm -hmm. but... The, the best thing about Volks, Volks in itself is a five floor hobby center in Akihabara, right? Mm -hmm. It's wicked. There's loads of stuff there. They did in a lot of the hobby bits have number one recommend, Ichiban mm -hmm. recommend. It was genuinely really nice as well to, to know that they actually had sort of gone out, used it, that you could actually talk to them about the benefits for sure, for of sure. things. And, it, and again, wasn't just, this is the highest priced item, which costs loads of money. You yeah, should yeah, have yeah. this. It was, some of them weren't, weren't that, and it was just cool to actually chat to them, chat to some genuine nerds about nerdy things. For sure. Which, you know, it's Which nice. we like, even yeah. with our terrible Japanese. Uh, but <laughs> this, Daniel, this. this, for our hobby QVC, thank you very much. This is a parts mm -hmm. opener for a snap mm -hmm. kit. Right, mm. so uh, Gundam's huge in Japan. Very huge. A lot bigger than Warhammer in Japan, even though there was some Warhammer stuff. Mm -hmm. And with snap kits, you do, a lot of the time, need to correct something that you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. This, uh, there was actually a bunch of them, and I've never seen them before, but it's, it's just a parts opener for mm. when you've snap, uh, snapped something together. Mm. With a lot of the kit bashing we've been doing at the moment, mm -hmm. I reckon that could be really handy. It could. I mean, I didn't know these things existed. Me and With a lot of the kit bashing, I mean, you know me, I'm a big fan of it. You are. I would love something like that because a lot of the time with kit bashing, it's just trying stuff out, seeing what works and what doesn't. Yeah, and you've got to glue it on, but mm. being able, no, just being able to prise it apart yeah. without getting all those glue marks everywhere. We're going to try it out. Exactly. Uh, could be a bit of a winner, that just, one. Exactly. Being able to prise it apart and still having that nice neat edge on it. Yeah. It's going to be a big, big winner. Hopefully. We'll see. Let's find out. Let's move on. We shall move More on. More good stuff. Uh, all right. Tweezers. <laughs> Again, <laughs> kit bashing. And I turned mm. into a bit of a Tamiya fanboy. 
on this trip. Uh, well, you might be seen in your t-shirt. I, I may well have bought the t-shirt. <laughs> uh, turned into a bit of a Tamiya fanboy. Mm -hmm. These were from Yellow Submarine. This is uh, one floor in Radio Kaikan. They did have a RPG shop around the corner. Mm -hmm. And we did also see uh, a Yellow Submarine in, was it Nagoya? Was it, it was Osaka? Osaka. Yeah, so there, it's a chain in Japan. Mm -hmm. Really good stuff. Again, weren't allowed to film inside because of some of that 18 plus content that was there. Mm -hmm. But uh, they did have a huge amount of Tamiya stuff. Starting off with some tweezers. Mm -hmm. Angled tweezers, straight tweezers, and then these are really cute. Little paint stirrers, oh, which I, I think could be I'm, quite nice. Was, we were eating with them earlier. Dave has been giving us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny salt spoon. <laughs> Dave's been giving us a lot of grief recently because of how we airbrush yes. and that we don't rinse our paints before it goes into the airbrush. Yes. So we also picked up this Mr. Paint Tray mm. from Mr. Hobby. We like everything called Mr. because... Kind of. Yeah. Mr. Hobby's the best because mm. everything is called Mr. Something. Exactly. Not about gender, but just yeah. it's a really cute thing. Exactly. It's nice to sort of... It's, it anthropomorphizes your yeah. little hobby stuff. You spend a lot of time with it, probably more than some humans. So yes. you know what? It's nice to give it a name. There you go. So <laughs> that goes that right here. It says Mr. Color Thinner mm. 110 uh, and the Mr. Color Range, which I also really like. Mm -hmm. Didn't pick up too much of that stuff, but uh, again... Yellow Submarine, wicked shop. Mm -hmm. uh, wicked. Really good shop. So that's what we're going to be using mm -hmm. our fancy paint stirrers in. Mm. This was uh, a recommendation from a very dear friend who thinks that we should be using Cutty for more things. Ooh. I don't really know what I'm going to use this for yet, but we but, picked up some Mr. Putty. And we're excited to find out. We are. Uh, probably for um, like gaps in mm -hmm. models or whatever, we'll start using that for maybe even some mm. sculpting. Nice little haul there. I'm really quite excited about using mm. some of those tweezers. Excited about using some Tamiya stuff. Tamiya stuff. Mm, exactly. Yes. Should we move those aside and we move shall. on to some more Tamiya stuff that we picked up. I There's think more. this might have been from Yellow Submarine again. This was but from Yellow Submarine. These are the Mr. Oh, sorry, not Mr. Just the Tamiya <laughs> Weathering Master series. Mm -hmm. They look a little bit like makeup. They do look a little bit like makeup, but then again, it's kind of what we do to our models. So there we go. Uh, we've been doing a bit more weathering. Tom has become a bit of a master of it. Yeah, very much. With a his warlords that he's been doing at the moment, he's giving yeah. us a nod from yeah. over on the box. Um, I'm quite excited about using these. I think mm. just with a little dab of a paintbrush, and then yep. you can some, use some of these. They just had, they actually had loads of them. Mm. I picked up the ones that I thought would be handy for Warhammery mm -hmm. stuff. So it's like sands and greens mm -hmm. and greys, but they had a lot of different colours. Um, really cool. I mean, they even had an article on the actual weathering stuff while we were out there. They did enough. <laughs> in the Gundam magazine, yes. which we didn't pick up because it was mad heavy. It was mad heavy, and it wasn't Japanese, and we don't read it that well. There were some pretty pictures. Well. It there was, were some pretty it was, pictures. It was helpful, but. Mm. Again, we'll give it a go, report back and see how it works. We will. I'm quite excited about using these. Um, mm. We've got a lot of the AK Interactive mm. uh, weathering pigments, which I think are really good. Mm. Be interesting to try some of the Tamiya stuff and see how that works. Mm. Dry brush effect, Daniel. Dry brush effect. Yeah, that's... everyone loves a dry brush effect. Exactly. I mean, that's quite cool and something that I need to really use a bit more of. Yes. <laughs> Talk about masking tape, Dan. Oh, everyone sure loves we. masking tape. Always. But actually masking tape is the bomb when it comes to hazard mm. stripes or camo or any of that good stuff. Mm. We got quite a lot of masking tape. We did indeed. Which I'm quite excited about, as well as tools to use with masking tape. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we start off with some of this gubbins? Nope, not that gubbins. This, this gubbins. gubbins. Um, Tamiya masking tape is really quite good mm -hmm. in a lot of instances, uh, but it's a little bit difficult to find here and it's a bit pricey. It is not pricey in Japan. No. Whatsoever. Uh, so we picked up as much as we could. Um, different mills, obviously, for different things. That's absolutely fine. This 0.7 millimeter, though, is so thin. It's so thin. It's tiny. It's it's also very very exciting because how, how how difficult is it to paint stripes on some of those smaller models? I mean, this that's going to be, be horrible to use anyway. To be honest, don't yeah. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but these. Uh, you know, some of these came mm. with the dispensers. We do already have some of this, mm -hmm. and we've used it for some of the stuff that we've done. But uh, I actually got something to make the whole process a little bit easier as well, mm -hmm. which is this. This is the Master Slicer. Actually, it's called a Master Slicer. Mm -hmm. I think it was probably meant to say Master. Maybe. Uh, this is a Master Slicer. It's a tiny little guillotine. I really am quite excited about that and because, you... because it's got little, um, it's got a grid here and measurements. So, you know, these are great with the mm -hmm. dispensers for the Tamiya stuff, but uh, it's quite hard when you want to just get even, uh, mm -hmm. evenly spaced different cuts of masking tape, especially when you're trying to do something pretty mm -hmm. delicate. Master Slicer. Master Slicer. But let's get on to where a lot of other stuff came from. Oh. Now we've finished talking about masking tape. Mm -hmm. I know, everyone can sit down after all the excitement. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, let's actually, let's chat about this really quick. Mm. This is, again, actually this isn't from the Mr. Color series, but it's the Finish Master R. 
we have been doing quite a lot more transfers recently mm -hmm. with the Warlords and the Warhounds and all that type of thing. This is a tiny little squeegee to use for, um, for tiny little decals that you get. I am not really a fan of decals most of the time, but they've mm -hmm. been pretty great so far for, um, for some of the Legion Graphonica stuff we've been doing on the, mm. on the Titans. Quite excited about using this. I think it mm. might actually fill a gap that I never thought I needed. We'll see. 660 yen. That's about four pounds. If that. We'll try it. Yeah. Except we'll try it. Very exciting. All these one. things very much worth a go and very cool little stuff. Yeah. Talk to you about other very exciting mm. purchases, but also really handy. Mm. Tiny little Tamiya uh, cotton swabs. Mm -hmm. Again, really useful for things like um, the decals and the, and the water slide transfers, mm -hmm. just to get things in place. But we got two, you might not be able to tell from the top down, but we <laughs> did get two different shapes. Very exciting. I'm sure everyone was thrilled to hear about those, but I'm a little bit excited. Tiny, tiny cotton buds. Tiny cotton buds. <laughs> Shall we get onto some meat and potatoes, Daniel? <sighs> Shall we indeed. These came from the world's best shop, Yodabashi Camera. Mm -hmm. It is insane how much stuff they have there. You can get everything. You can get literally, literally everything. everything. If there was one shop in Japan that someone had eight hours there and wanted to spend it in mm -hmm. one place, it would be Yodabashi You'd Camera. You'd probably pick Yodabashi. The one at Akihabara actually is probably the best one. Mm -hmm. um, Yodabashi's wicked. Now, the only downside is that they play the same song on repeat. Um, uh, you, you say that's a downside? Yeah, I say that's a I, downside. I, There's a couple of different like versions it. of it, but it's exactly the same song on repeat all day, every day. Until they want to kick you out. Until they want to kick you out where they play all land Zion. Yes. Uh, these are old things from Yodabashi. So Yodabashi, mm. I mean, it, I think it was nine floors, that shop. Mm. Um, the top floor was hobby and toys and really good stuff. And then a golf range. And a golf enough. range up on the roof. There's res a restaurant floor, but then there's electronics mm. and there's cool mm. stuff. There's toilets, there's home appliances. There's a mm. huge amount of different stuff in Yonabashi. Quite literally mm. everything yeah. you could ever want. Literally everything you ever want. Japanese toilet seats. Daniel, <laughs> let's keep this PG. Uh, but these are really cool. Look, they're from 2019, mm. um, 2016. Yeah. These are just Tamiya News. 100 yeah. yen, so they're about 55p. Yep. Tamiya News, uh, we'll put them up somewhere in the studio because they're mm. just really nice. They're just, they're just very nice looking things. They are, and you know what? One day we'll be able to read them and tell you exactly what's inside there. One day. Let's talk about some cutting boards then. Oh, shall we? Love a cutting board, especially when it's not mm. manky like all of my ones are. <laughs> one of these was for me, uh, one of these was for Tom. Tamiya cutting mat, A3 half size, and a Wave Corporation's cute little A5 one. This is a surprisingly great purchase, mm -hmm. I, I think, this one. Just because uh, we do a lot of cutting on our desk, mm -hmm. especially at the studio. Tom's very excited about putting this underneath the keyboard. Mm -hmm. uh, really handy size. Yeah, very Definitely. handy size. Really and quite impressed with that. It's quite cool that they did sort of have a few different handy different uh, sizes They're for all of, all of your sizes. cutting mat Yeah, needs. man, I really wanted yeah. like the A1, yes. the inclusive one, but <laughs> that's one for next time yes. with a really, really big suitcase. Mm -hmm. But I was really quite pleased with those. Mm -hmm. uh, again, pretty. Not very expensive, but pretty thin, uh, pretty thick, pretty Ooh, good quality. Exactly. Happy days. Pretty chunky. Happy very nice. days. Uh, oh, one more bit of masking tape. <laughs> but a very special. Save the best tape. for last. <laughs> <laughs> this Daniel mm. Cloud Camo masking, masking three. three. This is the small size, mm. but and you you will not be able to tell, but we're going to try it on something. Mm. This has got a camo print already in mm -hmm. for the masking tape, so you just take it off, take the uh, surround bits off, mm. and then it's going to be camo straight onto the whatever model you're painting. If you take a tank, you've got some nice thin, already pretty fine camo that's going to go on the top. Oh, wow, I mean, uh, I'm, and I'm genuinely surprised because this is a little sneaky one that this I, even was I didn't see one. while I was. Yeah, there. man. So this uh, is pre-cut. Yeah. So we got a lot of other masking mm. tape, but I think this is actually going to come in pretty big. Very very handy. We've got a little bit more Astra Militarum that we need to get done. Uh, so this mm -hmm. is probably going to come in handy there. Be very, very useful for some big Astra Militarum tanks. Yes. So 550 yen, that's about three pounds. Yeah. Not too bad. Not bad. Uh, let's talk... <sighs> let's finish up with the Yodabashi camera. Yes. Now, these, uh, these Tamiya colour thinners, <laughs> I did pick up some in Japan and then realised you can't take them out of Japan. So Tom bought some new ones, uh, and that's enough said about that. Yes. Hope, uh, we have heard that they are the bee's knees. They are the bee's knees. In, in terms, terms of paint thinner, so X20 we're going to X20A. X20A, not B, yes. not C. Not even X20 a. on its own. Yeah, man. Uh, last couple <clears throat> of bits we picked up in Yoda Bash Bash. Mm -hmm. This is quite exciting. It is, again, God Hands brand. Mm -hmm. uh, I sent a picture of this to Tom right at the start of the trip, mm -hmm. and then I had to hunt for it afterwards because it went out of, uh, <laughs> it went out of stock in a couple it, of different it places. It kind of all sold out, yeah. It did. Uh, but, 
for those of us who are not particularly um, gifted in the old eyesight department, it can be a little bit tricky mm -hmm. painting tiny models. Um, and you can wear the dorky glasses like some of us do. Tom. Uh, or you can go one step further and have a massive magnifying glass, mm -hmm. which also comes with a stand. Mm. God hand special. I probably won't be able to build it while we're doing mm. this, but general idea is that's it. Yeah, it's super, super easy. Chuck to on the magnifying glass and you're kind of good to go. And mm. I think this might, oh, it's magnetic as well. Mate, that's wicked. That's quite cool. That's that is very, cool. very cool. Uh, there we go. Magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. It's just going to make things a little bit easier when we're yeah. doing very high detailed models, which yes. of course we are renowned for. <laughs> uh, but look, it's better to be prepared. Yeah. So really good purchase that. I was very, really quite very impressed. Good I haven't seen anything like that over here. Mm. Pretty good. Very, very Hand good. Hand those over to you. Yes. Uh, one other bit from Yoda Bash Bash. This. Mm -hmm. I am not sure how excited to be about this. Well, well, you might want to put that down. I know, I'm going to find a good, <laughs> good home for that. Just put it here and we'll carry on. Thank you, other helper. Thank you very uh, much. This, look, we'll, we'll take it out. Mm. I often, when we're airbrushing at the studio or at mm. home, find mm. it annoying to try and find somewhere for the airbrush to live while you're mm -hmm. in between things. Yes, you can whack it in a little pot that also um, mm -hmm. gets rid of some of the paint fumes while you're doing it, but I, th no, this isn't gonna happen, but <laughs> I thought this was really cool. This mm. is Mr. Airbrush Stand and Tray Set 2, not Set 1, mm -hmm. Set 2. Set 2 was the DX version, mm -hmm. which uh, basically you've got a metal tray down here. Yep, for you've the got, drips. For the drips. You've got magnets mm -hmm. attached to a big stand that's then got two little airbrush holders on which means we can, it's very portable, we can just whack it wherever mm -hmm. we need it. It's not got loads of old paint and water and mm -hmm. whatever in. Um, and it actually could be pretty nifty. So time will tell mm -hmm. on this. It could just have been a silly purchase, but I reckon this was a pretty good one. I'm I mean, quite excited about using it. You say that, they use them in the, in the Gumpler hobby um, centre. Is so that a good one to move on to, Daniel? That could well be a good, good one to move on to. So when we say Gumpler, it, it's really just mm -hmm. Gundam, but the mm -hmm. models of Gundam. Are called Gumpler. Are exactly. called Gumpler. Um, Daniel did a little solo trip. Now, mm -hmm. we, we've been to Japan a couple of times. We have. Um, we did go together last time, but Daniel did a little solo trip this time mm -hmm. uh, to the Gundam Center in Odaiba. It's quite a cool little place. We have a little bit of footage from there because it was quite a special weekend to go down there because it was the release of the recent Gundam Seed Freedom movie over in Japan. So they had a whole bunch of stuff going on there. There was some really cool displays, some cool models. And in, I even got a sneaky look inside their painting center. You did, yes. and they used the old Mr. Airbrush stand and trace it there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I think you can book in to go mm -hmm. to their painting uh, area Yes, for, for Gundam stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could probably Take a, Take a Warhammer. Or Warhammer in. Um, but they've got airbrushes out of there and exactly, lots of paints yeah. and stuff and whatever. It's a really pretty cool place. It's that, if you ever see a picture of the life-size gun down, mm -hmm. it's just outside. Literally just outside. Sure, um, cool. we, well, we might have a picture of the life-size gun down. We might well do. Here, we yes. might well do. Talking about gun down, mm -hmm. uh, do you want to talk us through these markers, Daniel? Yes. So these are obviously something that's more gumpler based. These markers are used for panel lining. So to try and outline your gun down, make them look a little bit more realistic, detailed, and a bit nicer and prettier. I obviously thought that might be very useful for knights. It might well be. Yes. Um, so we will be doing a giveaway. If you head over to our Instagram shortly mm -hmm. after this one drops, we'll go in a yes. bit more detail, but there is one of these up for grabs as well as a cheeky gun down kit that uh, may well have come from the Gundam Center. It may well have come from the Gundam Center. It's a high grade Gundam, nice little one. It's the Gundam Bile from Iron Blooded Orphans for yep. anyone who's a fan. Yep. You'll get a panel liner pen in there as well to sort of get you started. I'm sure a lot of people will have their own paint, so to pretty it up. They won't have one of these though, I'm sure. There you go. But uh, really with Gundam, mm. they're, they come with uh, pre, pre-colored plastic. Mm. Um, just doing the panel lining makes it immediately one step above, mm -hmm. but they are very, very good to just spray over again mm -hmm. and start again and do it your own way. So don't be afraid if you do end up winning this and don't know about Gundams, yep. to just give it a go. Be good, hopefully nice easy kit, entry level sort of model. One of the quite the iconic Gundams as well from the Iron Blooded yeah, Orphan series. Yeah, Iron Blooded so, great. Um, it was just thought it would be a nice little present for one of our one of our lovely, lovely viewers. We took a little <clears throat> trip down to Studio Ghibli Town. Not town, park. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably a, a little clip in the uh, in the videos that you saw just before this, but uh, they turned the Expo mm -hmm. 20, uh, 2005 mm -hmm. park 
World Expo Park into, I think it had been sitting there for a little while, Studio Ghibli came in and they've started a, a bit of a theme park there. Yeah. No rides, just some really nice yeah. things. It's very nice, it's very cool. And it's very cool. And there's some quite lovely exhibits over there. There are, there were some wicked exhibits. The best one was just about food in yeah. Studio Ghibli films, yeah. which I thought was really cool. Um, I found a little model kit shop Exactly, there, that's what we thought you really might sweet. be interested in. I thought you might be interested in. Yeah. And uh, a lot of it was, um, Military kits, mm -hmm. Tamiya yeah. or whatever military kits. There's a lot of military stuff mm -hmm. in Studio Ghibli films. Mm -hmm. Very nice plane kits and whatever. There were some cars as well. There were some cars, yeah. Weirdly. Um, <laughs> but I, I love Poco Rosso. I think it's my favorite Studio Ghibli film. I do you now? Yes, Daniel, you don't know this, obviously, because I didn't go on about it a lot. Uh, but they had this really mm -hmm. cute little kit mm -hmm. of, uh, of the pig man himself mm -hmm. on a deck chair with a phone. I thought this was really cool. They were very insistent on mm -hmm. telling me that this does not come painted. And I was like, it's all right. <laughs> I'm going to be okay. Uh, that's, that's the bit you're looking forward to. That's what I was looking forward to. So this is a foam yeah. mold kit. Uh, yeah. It's just, I mean, it's slightly yeah. pre-coloured plastic, mm -hmm. but it's just a few different sprues. It's, I'm going to be using my god hands on these. Exactly. And maybe my fancy new paintbrush. It's very similar to the sort of thing you'll get in Gunpla. It um, is. So you can see sort of it's, it's pre-coloured, but it could definitely do it with a It could definitely do with a little bit of a touch-up. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm quite excited about painting that one up. I'll, uh, I'll whack up the Insta once I've done it. I might even record it, we'll see. I'm quite looking forward to that. Yes. But very excited about him. Mm -hmm. We are reaching the end, Daniel, and where better to finish up than the Warhammer Cafe and shop in Akihabara. We visited two Warhammer shops mm -hmm. in Japan, went to one in Osaka, yep. and went to the Tokyo Cafe. Mm -hmm. I think this is probably the maybe the best Warhammer shop. Um, Sorry, TCR. Sorry, Tottenham Court Road. Uh, probably yeah. outside of um, Warhammer World. Mm -hmm. But I picked up Tom a little mug because he mm -hmm. was a little bit jealous that he couldn't come with us and I wanted to make him feel a little bit yeah. better. Uh, it, it was really good though. They had they had some nice cabinets mm -hmm. of really well-painted stuff. They um, did. I think it's a bit of a newer thing in Japan, Warhammer. It's very, very new there. We were talking to the, to the, to, to the guys who were collecting. Yeah. They, they, they're all sort of fairly new to the hobby. Say fairly new, their painting was unbelievable. Their painting so, is unbelievable. Yeah. But I think you're, you know, Warhammer's going into Japan, um, which already has a very huge existing fan base of a lot of different model kit mm -hmm. stuff, Gundam stuff. Yeah. Like what, there's, it's a, the best thing maybe about something like Akihabara yeah. is the amount of hobby stuff that's there. Yes. Imagine if you could literally go down the street yeah. and go to about six different shops that all just sold cool stuff. Yeah. It was that, mm, but exactly. maybe more than six, maybe more than 10. It was pretty yeah. crazy. Anyway, Warhammer yeah. have now opened up a shop in Akihabara. Um, they had a pretty good selection. They had some weird old Forge World stuff still on sale that I hadn't seen in a little while, I like see. old Ripper Swarms and mm. stuff like that. That was pretty cool. They were really nice. They had a cafe there, mm -hmm. which I thought was great. It's mm -hmm. a little hole in the wall. You had a very nice drink from there, didn't you? I did. <laughs> very fancy. <laughs> very fancy uh, Dark Angels Caliban Green yeah. Pistachio Frappe. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you just got the uh, yeah. the pistachio latte, they'd um, they put like cocoa sprinkled mm -hmm. in either the raven wing or the fallen or the green wing, um, which is quite which cool. is pretty cool. They also had null oil coffee, yep, agrax shade coffee, mm -hmm. uh, and like pre calf and yeah. stuff like that. I thought it was really nice little themed. It was nice. The the, the themed drink names were just were just a little icing on the cake. Yeah, they were nice. They didn't have to do that, but it's, no, but there no. was a huge selection, all of them with Warhammer themes. Yeah, really cool. and the, the tables, um, the playing tables kind of stood out a little bit because mm -hmm. when you go to Warhammer World, you've got to very much book ahead or ask mm -hmm. to go on one of the big theme tables. Yes. And a lot of them are bigger than the normal six by four. Yes. In this uh, in this one in Akihabara, it, all the six by four tables were incredibly themed. One mm -hmm. had a Warbringer Nemesis yep. Titan on. It was badass. Which Tom quite likes. Exactly. He, he quite was, likes those yeah. quite a lot. Um, one had a train that was made out of old cargoes. Oh, old cargoes. I mean, the, think the cargo crates just in the middle of the table. But they constructed a train. I think we were trying to work it out. It might be from the Necromunda stuff. But I think it, it is plus a bunch of the cargo crates. But it was yeah. it was on rails and they built all of that stuff. It was really cool. Yeah. They were really nice folk in there. Mm -hmm. They had a really good little painting area. Mm -hmm. So the pallets were already on the table and they were in a little inset. But they had... Um, LED painting lights mm -hmm. over all the all the different palettes that they had and bar stools and I thought that right. was a really nice I, it's been quite a long time since I've gone into a Warhammer shop and painted there mm -hmm. um, and it, it kind of took me back a bit to my childhood where that was really the thing mm -hmm. but it was really well set up it was really well lit um, it was a great shop man yeah. it was really good it was really really good didn't pick up any kits because we don't really need them yes. right now but really interesting to see that in Japan because the previous times that we've gone the Warhammer has been almost non-existent. It's almost, you could basically find them in maybe like a Mandarake. Maybe, or like a Yodabashi camera or something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, that, 
That was the Warhammer store and cafe in Tokyo. Mm. And that, Daniel, is the end of our hobby roundup. Yes, I mean, I hope you found it interesting or useful. But I mean, there's a few really cool little tools there. And as you say, filling niches that like, you didn't even know existed. No, but it means that someone else thought it existed, yes. which definitely means that we needed it. Exactly. No, look, we're going to try out some of the stuff. Yeah. Um, if there's anything that you actually like, you want to know about, or mm -hmm. want to know where we got it from, or how much we were yeah. spending, or if it works, yep. Hit us up, uh, either on Insta or over here. As Daniel said, we're going to be doing a little giveaway, Japan-themed, of uh, a Gundam kit. So mm -hmm. head over to our Instagram to find out a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks very much. See you in the next one. It'll be good. All right, bye. Please, can we cut that out? <laughs> no, keep no. it. <laughs> no.